Hello. Welcome to the first of a series of videos where I'm going to go through some fitting concepts using our M2000 spectroscopic ellipsometer. This first video I'm just going to deal with some intro to software stuff as well as some fitting basics for transparent films specifically. So when you open up the Complete Ease software, you'll find that there's a number of uh, tabs along the top. The one we're going to focus on right now is the Analysis tab. There will be some things that you'll have to do in the measurement and hardware tabs, but that's best shown in person when you're actually working on a uh, working tool. Uh, if we go to the analysis tab, you'll see there are a few different sections of it. The first section we're going to take a look at is this data section right up here. This is where we can open or save uh, a data file. So I'm just going to open it, and I'm going to go ahead and open a uh, a data file that was collected for reactively sputtered aluminum oxide grown on silicon. Uh, so when it comes up, uh, you won't necessarily see this. We'll come back to this in a second. Uh, for just right now, I'm going to click this show map data right here. And that will bring us to the raw collected data, which is the psi and delta, which has been collected at a number of different uh, angles of incidence for the source and the detector. I don't really need to look at the delta information right now. It's a little bit more useful when you're trying to analyze the properties of, uh, of a substrate. So for right now, I'm just going to go to this little data tab right over here and go to uh, uncheck this double Y axis, and that will let me see either just psi or delta. Now I can switch back and forth by using this menu or go to other areas such as I can look at the depolarization. Uh, this isn't really going to be significant, just to show you that this is a thing which exists, the, though we, we will deal with this concept a little bit later. So I'll go back to Psi. I can also hit Control p to toggle back and forth between Psi and Delta. So now that I have, uh, I have my data file open, if I don't want to necessarily work with all this data at one time, I can go to Set Ranges, and I can, for example, just choose uh, 65 degrees, let's say. And now I'm just looking at the data for 65 degrees. From that same window, I can also uh, omit some of the wavelength information. In order to do that, um, I can also just left click and drag to select a range and then let go and it will zoom in on that range and I can zoom in further and further and further and just double click to bring yourself right back to seeing the full range. So now that we have uh, our data file open, we're going to start building a model to uh, explain this data in terms of thickness and the optical properties that the material has. So in this section, we'll start to build a model. You can open existing models or save a model once you've built it. Uh, for example, sake, we're going to build a model from scratch. So first I'm going to start by defining my substrate. I'll click this none right here and then I can change it to something other than none. So we'll go to library, semiconductor, and then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna find this silicon JAW. Anytime you see a JAW, that's a JA Wollum standard. So they're, they're general are, generally are pretty good uh, files to use. All right, so now my substrate is silicon JA Wollum. Um, I would like to point out this is a tabulated data file. Uh, basically what that means is that you don't have the ability to fit anything other than, let's say, the thickness. Now in the case of it being the substrate, we don't fit the thickness because it's just assumed to be infinitely thick in this case. Uh, but we will, we will take a look at this in a second with uh, the film that's grown on top. So if I go to Add, I can choose where I want to put the layer, either above or below. I'm going to put it above. And then I'm going to go to dielectric. Now I know this is aluminum oxide, so I'm going to go see if we have a model for aluminum oxide. Okay, we do. We have a few of them. We have this one that says Cauchy, in parentheses. This one that says Cody Lore for Cody Lawrence. That's the type of oscillator. And then there's just this one that says AL203.mat. And you can see in the comments it says AL203 data from Handbook of Ultra Thin Films. So this would be a, a tabulated data file. So let's just try that. Now that we have this file here, we can adjust the thickness. So I can go ahead and left click it, and then this window will pop up and I can type in 
what I want for the thickness, let's say, though, uh, this should be 500, and I'll just hit OK. Another method I can use is I can hover the mouse over it, hold shift, and then use the mouse wheel to move it. Now as soon as I do that, you start, you see there's this dotted line, which is the model. Now what this is, is it's saying, okay, let's say you have a silicon substrate and then you have aluminum oxide, this file that defines aluminum oxide, and it's 400 nanometers thick. What would your data look like? Okay, and that's what it would look like. So let's try to see if we can change the thickness until this matches. Now at 470, this peak matches, this peak sort of doesn't, and then this peak is kind of similar. If we try to go up a little bit further, we start to see, well, Look, as this gets thicker, these uh, interference peaks start to get closer and closer together. So we can see it's definitely thinner. That is to say that the position along the wavelength axis is related to the thickness of these films. But another thing that is related to where these peaks will be located are the optical properties. So the fact that I'm not going to be able to get this to fit is basically telling me that the optical properties, the, the index of refraction and the absorption that uh, defines this material are, are not the same as what is captured in this tabulated data file. And if I just right click this, I can toggle this little fit symbol back and forth. So now it's going to be fit. If I just hit fit, it will try and fit this data. And it really can't get it to match. So in order to deal with this, I'm going to replace this file with something that has parameters. The simplest one to use in this case, because it's transparent, is a Cauchy equation. So I'm just going to choose Cauchy. And as soon as I do that, I get this little plus that I can open up. And now I have access to the coefficients in the Cauchy equation. So in addition to fitting the thickness, I can also fit these values as well. So let's leave thickness where it is and just roll this value thicker and we see that the the peaks move to the right as I go up and they also get smaller. Then there's this B coefficient which kind of widens these in addition to moving things forward and uh, reducing their amplitude. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this a little bit and see if I can get these to fit. Uh, nope. Not quite. Let's make this a little thicker, and then let's make this a little higher, and oh, that's a little bit better. I'm going to move this back. If you uh, hold Control Shift, you can increment these by smaller amounts. Uh, and now again, I'm, I'm using the I'm holding Shift and using the mouse wheel to modify these on the fly without having to click them and type them in. But if I want, I can left click and I can type a value in. Okay, so that's not too bad. So this is pretty close. I'm just going to fit the thickness. I'll fit this parameter, and I'll fit this parameter. And I'll hit fit. What do I get? Well, I get something that fits really well. Uh, now this is really small. I could probably just make this 0 and not fit it. Oh, this pops up. This is uh, the N and K. Anytime you alter these, sometimes these will pop up. We'll just go back to data and just fit these parameters. Okay, now that's a pretty decent fit, though I may be able to get a, a better fit by incorporating roughness. So I'll just add a fit for roughness and see if that increases it. It, it, it does improve it a, bit, a little bit. So my target thickness for this film was about 500 nanometers, and it's telling me about 511 nanometers with a few nanometers of roughness, and it's telling me the properties I have are 1.64 for the index of fraction at 632 nanometers. That's roughly what this uh, comes out to. So now I'll apply this to all of my data. I'll hit, I'll go back to, up here to set ranges, select all angles, okay, and then I'll just fit it to all the data, and now I have a pretty good fit. If I zoom in, I can see, I can see where the fit deviates. Okay, well this, this is a pretty good fit. This is pretty accurate. Um, now there is probably a native oxide on this substrate, but if we throw that in, we'll see it really won't it really won't make much of a difference. It just complicates the model, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, now this um, this data file is actually not a 
a single scan, it's actually a set of scans. So if I look at this position slider right here, this shows up when you've done a, a mapped scan. So you've collected a scan at a variety of points across the surface of the wafer, which you have defined, and so you can create a, a contour map of the surface. So if I just slide through this, I can move through the data collected at the different points, and you'll see that the fit is only actually being applied to the first data point. In order to apply it to all the data points, I'll hit fit scan data right here. Okay. Now, fit scan data has made it so that the fit is applied to all of these. Now that I have that, I can click this which says show map data. And this brings me to show the side value that was collected at every point uh, at a specific wavelength, which you can set by going to set ranges and then choose this graph wavelength. So but what I will do is I will go to results and anything that is being spit out here as a fit parameter will be something I can choose such as the thickness and now I'm looking at a contour map of the thickness across the area of this uh, square centimeter size chip and it ranges from 522 to about 511 in a direction uh, from corner to corner diagonally. We can also add something like um, our optical information into this picture by going to model and we can select layer one and now we're looking at N and K of our alumina oxide, aluminum oxide layer that's been modeled with a Cauchy equation. Now in the Cauchy equation there should be no absorption so you're only using this if, if your material is truly transparent as you can see the K is down at zero uh, there should be no absorption. If I want to put the index of refraction, let's say, index of refraction at a given wavelength um, into a, uh, a contour map that we can look at, we'll go to uh, show, show map data, results, thickness. Okay, so we're back here. We see thickness. Uh, let's like, we'd like to get a, a, a graph like this that shows us the index of refraction. So I can add that to what's being reported, and it is located, here it is, in fit options. You can go to include derived parameters, now on, and I can add a derived parameter. So what I'll do is I can change the type, I'll choose this as all the different types I can choose, so I'll choose N for index of refraction, for layer number one, at this wavelength, this will be the name of it, and I'm not going to hide it. So now that that's there, I'm going to go ahead and do fit scan data one more time. And now I have this as a fit parameter that gets spit out. Now if I go to results, I'll have this as an option, and I can choose it. And now I'm looking at the index of refraction over the surface. All right, so uh, that about sums up a pretty basic example of uh, a thin transparent film grown on top of an, an absorbing substrate. This type of method should work for pretty much everything that you uh, do this way. One note that I, I will make is this aluminum oxide uh, material, it wasn't really necessary that I started with this because I was going to fit the parameters of this anyway. I could also just go to change this out for a basic Cauchy equation and when that shows up, I'll have the ability to fit these values anyway, and then I can go ahead and fit. I can go ahead and fit this anyway, and I, I get the same I get the same result with this. So it doesn't really matter how you approach that if you're building it from scratch. However, if you do have uh, a material that you would like to fit, uh, you know is always going to be the same and then save it as a tabulated data file to simplify some of your other models you can also use uh, that technique as well uh, which I'll, I'll show that in a, a later video all right thanks look forward to video number two